Yeah, what's going on? I'm going to get right to the point. We're talking about O.J. Simpson. Damn. <clears throat> Came home this morning. Ready to go to sleep. <laughs> then I saw the news. It wasn't everywhere at, at first. And then I was like, damn, O.J. Simpson? Gone? I said, damn, I just saw him on the interview with Cameron and Mace. I said, damn. He seemed like he was fine. And I remember seeing in, in one of these news news uh things where it said he had cancer. He had a hard time walking. And he was about to go. <clears throat> and then um, he said that wasn't the case. And now he's gone. I also always said, damn. You know, if they really want to get his ass and go see a doctor and the doctor can sabotage, you know. So they said he got diagnosed in February. He's gone now. So who knows how that goes. But I also kept thinking to myself, damn. All these people keep going. Lou Gossett Jr. <clears throat> I forgot who the hell else just died also recently. Aside from O.J. Simpson. Uh, well, I'm like, damn, Farrakhan's still around. Now, if Farrakhan were truly the enemy, now who's hope more hated in the white media, O.J. Simpson or Louis Farrakhan? I was just listening to this Michael K. show. I like the guy on TV, but listen to this guy on the radio over the last few years. This guy is clearly a fucking racist and a white supremacist and a rotten creep. <laughs> I mean, damn. He said he didn't like the guy, called him a murderer. Let's get real. When you see these comments on YouTube and every place else, <clears throat> they always say, rest in peace, Ron and Nicole, or they have their uh, revenge now. Or OJ's rotting in hell. I'm like, damn, if OJ's rotting in hell, you might see some of my comments on YouTube if they haven't removed them. I say, damn, if OJ's rotting in hell, God damn it, what the, what the hell are white people doing? Or where, uh, as a group, were the white people going to be rotting in? Shit, if OJ was supposedly evil, I mean, a man gets acquitted of the charges, white people want to play the victim card and don't like it, so they want to call the man guilty anyway. And then they want to and they were up here debating this is a sports channel. Well, he wouldn't have gotten so much news if it weren't for what happened in 1994. Yes, he would have because he's still one of the greatest football players of all time. And he's in the Hall of Fame. And he would have been on the E, you know, he would have still been what he was before that. But it goes to show how phony white people are. Because. You know, they were his friends. He grew up in the ghetto. Obviously, he wanted to be white and live in the white world. And um, he accomplished that. Thought he had some white friends. But see, what he didn't know, he learned later in life. But I learned early <laughs> in my life. That, um. You may think you have some friends as white, but when some shit goes down, <laughs> you're going to realize, let's say if you got 10 of them, maybe one might be a more faithful friend. And then even after a while, they're going to get on board with the rest of them. And it ain't going to be about what you did or what you didn't do. It's all about who you are. That's They didn't like you for that to begin with. When white people say, Ron and Nicole, and he killed two people. They don't give a fuck about no Ron and Nicole. Let's get real. They didn't know who the fuck Ron Goldman was. They didn't know who the fuck Nicole Brown Simpson was before that shit happened. Because I, I damn sure didn't. <laughs> so, they just use them. They use OJ to hate on black people. And they use Ron and Nicole 
to represent white people. Oh, you kill two white people. That's what they really mean. You kill two white people. All the people, all the black people, white people were killed even before the U.S. got discovered or got created. They don't give a fuck about that because you see all over these police activity videos and shit. They always say, oh, stop playing the race card. Stop playing the victim card. That's what they're doing. Playing the victim card. Oh, well, he, you know, he got found. Uh, uh, he got acquitted, but he wasn't. That doesn't mean he wasn't guilty and the, the jury was racist. Because that one crackhead juror on OJ Made in America said so. She said uh, we, we would let him, let him go because of the uh, riots. But that was a fucking clear cut crackhead juror. Or they, you know they just paid her some goddamn money. You know they'll say any goddamn thing. And I, I got to be honest with you. Hold on. I did buy that OJ Made in America. A few years, a couple of years ago, something like that. I think it was 10 bucks or something like that on Amazon Blu-ray. Which was a great documentary. Carefully crafted to chronicle... The rise of his fame, which people like me, of course, we didn't know about his 1960s and 70s fame. Then they go into the trial and all that kind of shit. But they, they, they put some slick shit in there, too, talking about his father being gay. And then the juror trying to make it look like the jury only uh, let him go because of the uh, racism. And then, of course, they use another one of those black, half black, half white Jew or, or black looking Jew to uh, make the documentary. And, of course, they made sure he was interviewed at the time. Really slick shit. And, and of course, when Jews like Rosenberg like talking about it, they always like talking about the media Stroking tensions as if they're not in control of the goddamn media. They're the ones who's in control. They don't like OJ because Ron Goldman was a small hat, a Jew. That's why. And OJ didn't pay them shit. But let me take it back real quick. Because it is crazy. It's 30 years. And I, you know... I'm sure you heard in some of these videos I, I was watching because there's one channel that got all the whole fucking trial videos on it. So I was watching a little bit of that because, you know, every now and then you want to say, you know what, let me hear a little something th that, that says the man did it. And see where the, they got slick at. So you can go back and check that shit out. A whole lot to check out. And also before I go on, I also think called out because I thought it was pretty interesting that he he died 30 years almost to the day when the event took place. And um he was 76, you add that together, that's 13. So make it that what you will. But I was watching OJ videos lately because I was like, you know, I want to look back on it again because it was a spectacular event. For those who were too young to know about that, I, I, it's hard for me to relate or relay how what, what, what that event equated to as far as news coverage goes. Because it was bigger than 9-11, believe it or not. That's the crazy part when you think about that shit. 9-11 was to come. That was coming after OJ, but it was bigger than that. It was bigger than that Branch Davidian compound shit. It was bigger than the previous World Trade Center bombing. That shit was bigger than Jim Jones. Man, that shit was really big. 
And for some odd reason, it's a lot bigger than Aaron Hernandez. Because they hyped this shit up. They said O.J. Simpson, the most famous person ever to be charged with murder. That's how they hyped that shit up. And when they said that, I, I, I was saying to myself, oh boy, had to be a black man. But then you got Aaron Hernandez. I always point this shit out. And you might see some comments on, on YouTube. O.J. Simpson gets more hate than Aaron Hernandez who killed three people and shot up another one. But some people might say, well, he got acquitted of the double homicide. But everybody said he did it. And you notice how with that, white people don't say, well, he still did it. I don't give a damn if he got acquitted or not. Then you had Darren Sharper. <laughs> Now, I was giving Darren Sharper the benefit of the doubt because the more that came along, I was like, oh, boy. I, I mean, and, and women were like, you know, I take the man. So I'm like, you know, wh why would he have to do this? But it turns out he admitted to it and, you know, it is what it is. Now, he was on his way to the Hall of Fame. Aaron Hernandez may have been on his way to the Hall of Fame. But O.J. Simpson gets all the hate. Everybody, practically everybody got famous out of this shit and came off of that shit but O.J. Simpson. Everybody else exploited the deaths and tried to act like they gave a fuck about Ron and Nicole. They didn't give a fuck about no Nicole Brown Simpson and no Ron Goldman. Ron Goldman was going there to get some pussy. And that's the bottom line. I imagine Tariq Nasheed will make something out of this because he's always been defending O.J. Simpson. Which I don't mind I'm doing that. But let me tell you. Because I remember this shit. Because it totally captivated. <laughs> my imagination. My life. Because I, I was like. Man this shit is unbelievable. Uh, I, But as far as press coverage goes. I think. The best. Now, I wasn't there for all this stuff. But I'm just imagining JFK assassination levels. That that must be what what this OJ Simpson shit coverage was like. That's what I'm guessing. Cause I know that JFK, I know they must have talked about that shit for years. But probably not even around the clock like they did OJ. I know it was two straight years they discussed this shit. Two or three straight years. It was nothing but O.J. Simpson shit. And Geraldo Rivera, his whole show ended up being uh, O.J. Simpson. The show he had on, I think it was CNBC. Then, you had, um, I'm sure they talked about that shit up until around 1999. Not around the clock like that, but on a regular basis. <clears throat> That's why I'm thinking, even 9-11, that was definitely around the clock news event. But for some odd reason, O.J. Simpson trumped that. That's why you see the man, the news of the man's death everywhere. So... You know, I, I was watching TV as a teenager, of course. Watch, watching the uh, the new news. I remember when I first heard of the news of the O.J. Simpson situation. You know me, even back then, I was thinking about why am I hearing about this? That's what I'm thinking about. <clears throat> so I first hear the news. I think it was on CNN because I used to watch CNN a lot. That was back when it was uh, owned by Ted Turner and it was trustworthy news. Now it's nothing but propaganda and all out crap. So I even got some, not tapes of the OJ Simpson, but some tapes of CNN back then. And then you look at it, you're like, damn, forgot how that shit used to be. Used to believe the news that was on CNN. Now, the first thing I do is doubt the news. I don't even watch CNN. 
Mainly because I don't have any cable. But, <laughs> but even on internet, I don't watch that shit. But, um, turning the TV one day, I think when it first happened, I remember it clearly. Because, like I said, you ever talk, you talk about the event that captivated a nation. And apparently the world, I guess it captivated the world because it captivated the United States. So the rest of the world wanted to get involved in it just because it was part of the United States. Or maybe it was some other ritualistic type shit going on that I obviously had no idea about back then. But first saw a little news brief because CNN, they used to do these little news briefs. I don't know if they still do it. And they said, ex-wife of... Uh, O.J. Simpson was found murdered. And I was like, oh. And then I thought to myself, I said, well, I mean, if that's his ex-wife, why, why the fuck is that news? Now, keep in mind, I didn't know who the fuck she was at the time. I didn't know any of these characters. <laughs> but <laughs> like everybody who, who was there. You ended up finding out all about these people and you're like, God damn, these one minute you don't know not one person. The next minute you know about all their fucking lives and shit and their habits and shit. It's just, shit is crazy. So I'm just like, oh, okay, well, I don't know who she was. I don't remember any wife of OJ Simpson. So, and I didn't know she was white. So I was just like, okay. Then I heard another news brief on it. Because I was like, why are they talking about O.J. Simpson if that's his ex-wife? But I didn't know that it was a recent ex-wife, though. I assume it must have been years ago since they said ex-wife, you know. Uh, then they kept going back to the story. And they kept talking about and showing him. And talking about how he returned home from the flight. I ain't about to go through the whole shit, of course, but I'm just trying to show you how they start hyping it up. So I said, well, I guess this must be something since they keep focusing on this shit. But when it first came out, they didn't really make it look like, you know, he did it. But, you know, since, you know, police were talking, you know, once the police start talking to you, they assume that you must be involved. But, you know, after a while, you know, you saw him with the handcuffs and you're like, damn. I didn't know nothing about his life. I knew the name O.J. Simpson. I knew he was a football player. I knew he had to have been a running back since that's, you know, what he was always advertised as in, in, in commercials and shit. Uh, but I didn't know when he stopped playing football. I didn't know when he started playing football. But I did see him in some movies. <clears throat> so I knew of the guy. And he was on NBC doing the football and I noted how uh, later on when his buddies white buddies uh, went against him they said well he tried to act like he was sophisticated and could speak uh, proper English like white people but his English is poor I don't think it was though but you know that's what they said that's how they nitpick and turn on you <clears throat> so you know all that shit's going on and they start going deeper and deeper, developing the shit. And then, you know, they tell you about the nature of the shit and then the trial. And then when the trial is beginning, I was thinking to myself, they always got introduced race. I remember that Jeffrey Tubin guy who has to be another small hat because he looks black, mixed black. It's funny how these Jews, I guess because they control the media, but a lot of these blacker looking Jews, man, they can just go on and be white. It is what it is, but that was the main guy that kept on harking about race, Jeffrey Tubin. I wouldn't have even known about the guy if it had been not had not been for that O.J. Simpson shit. And um, so we got that going. Then. Of course, she had the Geraldo Rivera. But once the, 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 the case was about to begin, then I kept saying to myself, damn, it looked like he's guilty. I said, 
I said, I don't know how his lawyer's gonna get up, get around this one. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. That's what I was saying. I was like, I don't know how how they gonna get around this shit. And to my surprise, they get around that shit. <laughs> but I'm glad somebody recorded. I assume all of them. You can watch on YouTube. I think it's called OJ Simpson Trial Channel, something like that. I imagine that OJ Made in America. The uh, Blu-ray set might go up in price now. Like I said, it was still a well-made documentary. They say it was eight and a half hours long. But it's just that the final thing is they try to say the jurors were racist and let them off. But they should have made them guilty. And then you got coon-ass Stephen A. Smith talking about if I had been on the jury... I would have thrown them under the bus, under the jail. Leave it to a coon. And that other coon that used to be on uh, ESPN, I forgot her name, Steele, St Sage Steele, or her YouTube channel. That's the only reason I even found out she had a YouTube channel. They, I told you they're taking over YouTube. It's because I was looking up coverage for uh, the O.J. Simpson shit. So... <clears throat> You know, it's just crazy. Johnny Co Cochran, brilliant. He, you know, white people were mad at him because, you know, my man did what he did. I mean, that's his job. To do what he did. White people are also hypocrites. On the one hand, they say that the jury was racist. On the other hand, they say that the prosecution, they were stupid for uh, having O.J. Simpson try on the gloves. And, of course, in hindsight, some people say, well, knowing that the blood dried him out and all that kind of stuff. That's why he wore rubber gloves on him in case, you know, so he can't pull that. They don't fit shit. But that's what they, that's the move that they pulled. They regretted that. Mark Furman pleading the fifth. He's a motherfucking detective. <laughs> and the whole point was, you know, you're planting evidence. That's the whole defense they planted evidence and uh they framed oj i'm not gonna lie I, I thought that shit sounded ludicrous i ain't gonna tell you no lie i said come on mainly because he ran in the in the bronco so i was like my man seemed guilty to me i said that shit is crazy i said my man broke down and, and sliced two people up now, Ryan Goldman, he was out looking for pussy, which I, you know, I don't blame the guy. I mean, now, well, I was going to say, I'm sure he regrets going over there that, that night, of course, but I think it was her mother had left her glasses at the place he worked at. He volunteered to take the shit back to her. I know her. I'll take it to her house. I don't know if he had been there before, but apparently he knew where the fuck it was at and then felt comfortable enough to go over there. I think it was at midnight. So maybe he went over there and did his thing before or got his dick sucked. Cause you know, I'm just saying that's what she was doing with people. So bottom line is he went over there for pussy. Like, like most of us, you know, we've risked our lives or, or, came close to risking our lives to get some pussy. So you can't really blame the man in that regard. And of course, if the man would have uh, known, he probably wouldn't have done it, of course. I mean, you coming up across a murder. That's how I always thought it was. He came across O.J. Simpson murdering Nicole. And then it, while OJ is in a, uh, you know, a full rage, killing rage, Ron Goldman didn't stand a chance. But then I saw something, because this is funny, because it's about a month or so ago. I was watching some other video on that shit from back in the 90s, I think. And they showed a different scenario that I never heard of before which they said that they thought that the killer knocked Nicole 
out. As Ron Goldman was coming. And they, they claimed that he. Kind of tortured him or. Was poking at him uh, to intimidate him. Before uh, slicing him up. And then they went. Then he went and killed Nicole. But every time. Uh, every other story was. You know. Nicole got killed. Then Ron came in surprise. And he had to get killed. Because he was a witness. And because he's probably coming to get some pussy. That's why. Which is probably one of the things that enraged OJ. Now I will admit the abuse that he. Was giving her. You know that. That was different from. His public persona. And usually when guys can react like that, they can kill. They can beat you, they'll kill you. So, you know, that was the crazy thing about that whole trial. And that's why people are still uh, talking about the guy now. Because I was thinking to myself when I was watching these old videos, I was like, damn. I wonder what what happened if he died. <laughs> Especially when, when I saw him with the camera on and mace. Because I was like, damn, he looked good. That's the one thing you can say about him. He never looked like an old, weak old man. You know, he still looked strong. You know? And didn't really look his age. He didn't really look old, old, you know? Uh, he probably would have never di uh, not dyed his hair if, had he not gone to jail. Um... But he seems strong. Now, I don't forget Cameron's comment uh, that he made as far as uh, implying that the man, you know, trying to joke and say he was killing, killing the uh, shit or something like that. And that's Cameron Coonan. So they, they get all these black celebrities to coon out like they ain't no tomorrow. That's why these people are full of shit. Even if you thought that oh, if you're a celebrity and you thought that OJ did it. You should not say it to appease white people because I know a lot of these Negroes, they're thinking white people are angry and upset. So I better not get them upset or make them direct their anger at, at me. I was watching the ESPN segment where it was that Kimberly girl with the big titties, that bald headed lady and that other dude. And then they had some white dude that I've never seen before. I'm like, man, who the fuck is this guy? The others were talking relatively positive about OJ, except for that Kimberly. She said something funny. She said, didn't he have a commercial for Isotomer? In case people don't know, those are gloves. I don't know if they still make those shits. I think the main characteristic of those gloves, I think they were thin gloves or something like that. Thin, fashionable gloves. I hope that wasn't a poor joke on her part, because if it was, it was. <laughs> but they had the white guy. He's just coming out with all the hate. He's a killer. He did this. He did that. Nobody cares about his football career. Well, you're on ESPN. OJ Simpson was always regarded as one of the top, at the very least, top 10 some say top five. Some say the best football player to ever have done it. If not running back. And people say on this radio I was listening to this ESPN. They were saying, uh, well, <clears throat> if it was just about his football career, he probably wouldn't have made the news like that. Yes, he would have. Jim Browns did. I mean, come on. If you wanted the best, not just the fucking Hall of Famer, but one of the best to ever have done it, and you go, you're going to make some news. But of course, the double homicide obviously made him even bigger than his career. But he's still in the Hall of Fame as it is video, because I kept checking. He, uh, the Buffalo Bills, I was seeing if they, I always like checking to see if other people t talk about it. I didn't see the Buffalo Bills putting a uh, remembrance thing up because, you know, that was their man. He, I think he's still in their Hall of Fame and he's still in the Hall of Fame. So that's the other thing about it. Whether you think he did it or not, 
he was found not guilty. And OJ Simpson is still in the Hall of Fame. And they say, excuse me, they say you can't, no off the uh, field issues can be considered when putting somebody into the Hall of Fame. It's only about what they did on the field. And when I was watching somebody putting together something about Darren Sharper, somebody, I was like, damn, he was eligible for the Hall of Fame. And somebody voted for him. But obviously he didn't get enough votes and he was never put on a ballot again. Even though they say you got to dismiss the off the field shit. It's hard to dismiss that shit. And nobody's just going to say a guy who did all that shit is going into the Hall of Fame. They're just not going to do it. But then you got Aaron Hernandez. Who was on his way to a Hall of Fame. Now, here's the, here's the difference in this shit. First of all, the people Aaron Hernandez killed were essentially black men. Caribbeans and Cape Verdeans. You could argue that he targeted these guys because they were black. You could argue that. Now, some of you might say, well, you had a black wife. Okay. Then they pulled the homosexual angle on him. Maybe that's why they let him off the hook. This guy, um, unlike O.J. Simpson, Aaron Hernandez was an active NFL player going on a murder spree. Fucking serial killer. Now, if O.J. Simpson did it, <clears throat> you know, he was a, I, I don't want to say mass killer, but you could say, a, uh, what would they call that? Well, I guess a double murderer, I guess you could say. Murderous rage. But Aaron Hernandez, on the other hand, shot a man when he used to play in Florida. Then, in Boston, double homicide. I forgot why he shot and killed those other two guys. Maybe they could have been gay or something. I don't know how true the gay angle is, but unless he was just insane I guess it would make sense that a guy would panic like that you know playing in football and kill people but still doesn't make sense that an active NFL player <laughs> is gonna go murdering people that, that, that shit doesn't make any kind of sense but that's what happened and that Patriots Dynasty show I only managed to get one episode for some odd reason I can't download the rest for some odd reason but it is what it is. I'm going to try that other. Uh, oh, I think that other site got taken down. Damn. But. um, That's the fucking. Serial killer. That's who Aaron Hernandez was. A serial killer. Then the Odin Lloyd guy. <clears throat> they said he probably killed him. Because. He knew about the gay shit. And Odin Lloyd apparently knew that he was about to go. And was texting. If he knew that shit, then the fuck you get in the car for? It's a wild ass uh, event. Series of events. But you know people hung around him because he had the money. And kept their mouth shut. Active NFL player. Is a fucking serial killer. Darren Sharper was retired. OJ Simpson was retired. So. While they said that OJ Simpson was the most famous man ever. Charged with murder. There have been other popular people. Charged with murder like a Phil Spector. It's pretty famous. And a few other people out there. A lot of rich people out there charged with murder. When they get away with the shit, when they're white, the media has nothing to say. Except, well, uh, the jury didn't prove it. That's the end of the story. Lee Harvey Oswald, 
Now, I know he wasn't famous before the murder, but people say he did it. But the motherfucker was never put on trial. Instead, he got the death penalty before a fucking trial. But history says they either say he did it or he was the accused assassin of JFK. He's in the history books, but he doesn't know it. It's fucking crazy. But it's kind of crazy, you know, it's weird because it's another chapter closed in people's lives. You know, even Michael Jackson, when he died, that was very big news. And I'm sure a lot of people remember that. But, and that went on for a while. But of course, it quickly went into the negative. Whitney Houston. It seems that so many of our greats, somebody else just died. I forget who the fuck it was. Aside from Louis Gossett Jr., it was somebody else. I'm like, damn, all our greats are going. And they shit on them as they go. I don't know if that's a part of the secret society uh, uh, situation. But it seems to only happen with black people for some odd reason. So I don't know. Again, I don't know what the fucking benefits are. <laughs> I mean, you know, it is what it is with that kind of shit. Now, Diddy News, I ain't even give a fuck about that shit because that's nothing but um propaganda. When they keep shoving the shit in your face without no actual facts, I ain't got time for that shit. Um, and sex is, you know, sex crime. I don't even know if it's sex crimes or not, but, you know... Rich people always have wild shit going on. So. You know. OJ Simpson's gone. That's another chapter closed. I, I, I'm still trying to figure out. How big that news was. See. They say the Beatles were very big. I swear to you. I think the JFK. The biggest shit, news-wise, with extended coverage for years, I think, had to have been World War II. I'm sure probably World War I, too. Uh, what, what, what can you say after that? Can't even think of what happened in the 50s. <laughs> And the JFK assassination in 9-11. But O.J. Simpson is the face of racial hatred. They hated the fact that they loved them. And they hated the fact that he didn't get lynched. <laughs> And you had a brilliant lawyer in the Johnny Cochran. It's a damn shame he had to go because my man was brilliant. And he wasn't even supposed to have been the lead attorney either, but it turned out that way. So you got the Kardashians that came out of them. I'm, I'm sure we'll see golden responses and other people's responses. We'll see how You know, tacky they might be if they say good riddance and all that kind of shit. You know, I wouldn't expect them to feel bad for the guy, but we'll just see how they respond. But now we know that they don't we don't have to hear any more about them talking about OJ Simpson this and OJ Simpson that. But it's just weird, you know. Let me tell you this, man. Everybody used to watch that O.J. Simpson shit. I ain't going to tell you no lie. Everybody is glued to the TV on that shit. It was that captivating. Because you would think it to yourself, damn. Motherfucker famous like that. My man's about to go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And then, um, but that Mark Furman shit, that was a turning point. White people love to forget about that Mark Furman shit and say, oh, well, the trial wasn't about him. It was because he was the motherfucker trying to set the man up. That's what the, his attorney say. And he, he's a detective planting gloves and they ask him about all that shit. And he wants to plead the fifth. If a man is on trial for double homicide and one of the detectives in the case is they're pleading the fifth. I mean, and you're a juror. What the hell? You you, you must be saying to yourself, God damn it, something's up. That was strong, high powered, reasonable doubt. And the attorneys were smart because they made sure that Johnny Cochran or um, the other black guy did not talk to Mark Furman like that. They had F. B. F. Lee Bailey do it. You know, they were better than the uh, prosecution. And of course, the Shapiro guy, he's, he's a small hat. You know, my man start, started opening his mouth and years later talking about, uh, I think O.J. Simpson did it. Now, he's a uh, small hat. Ron Goldman was a small hat. Now, at the time, I thought the guy was fucking Japanese because I was like, Shapiro. I'm like, how the hell is that a fucking Jewish name? Shapiro. At least spelled like that anyway. And he looked like he was fucking half Japanese and shit, so I assumed he was fucking half Japanese. <laughs> but, um... Carl Douglas, that's the other uh, lawyer. And I like the fact that lawyers just say they don't come out and say, yeah, I think he was guilty, but we did a good job getting them all. You know, they just say, listen, our job is to defend the client to the best of our ability. And that's what law is all about. Defense attorneys versus prosecutors. They want to see who can do the best job. Even if defense attorneys get murderers off and child molesters off, deep down inside, they may not like it, but they get paid and they can say, hey, my expertise in the law was better than the whole team of the state. And they're specialists. And then they charge more money because they can say, hey, look, we got this guy off. We got this person off. This type of shit happens. So at the end of the day, O.J. Simpson is still in the Hall of Fame. The top 100, I think they had him at 30 something. When they know he would have been in the top 10. But they couldn't leave him out. They can't leave him off the map because he wasn't convicted. So he's still in the Hall of Fame. So in that sense, his legacy wasn't ruined, but you got white people saying his legacy was ruined. But they don't give a fuck about his legacy. His legacy's not ruined because he's still in the Hall of Fame. And um, once again, they say he's a double murderer only because Ron and Nicole were white and, and Jewish. If OJ would have sliced up Pookie and Daquan, they wouldn't give two shits about O.J. Simpson walking free. They would be talking about, well, you never know. Daquan and, and Pookie may have been trying to rob O.J. Simpson. So O.J. had to do what he had to do. They don't like the fact that a black man sliced up or, or supposedly sliced up two white people. And one of them being a Jew. And why they talk about him over the years. Because even them, they said they were talking about, well, his family. I guess you can't talk about him because of the family. They always talk about Nicole as if she was somebody. Well, I guess as if she was the way they saw her as a white woman that didn't belong to O.J. Simpson. But. And they talk about the Simps, the, the, the Brown family. As if. They're a separate family. The Brown family is connected with the uh, Simpson family because there are two kids involved. So you can't separate the two. Now those two kids, now they have their parents, uh, uh, both of them gone. But now, you know, they're 
grown adults, probably 40, 45 years old or something like that. And, uh, you know, another NFL great has gone. Even though he was younger than a lot of them that went. But, you know, Farrakhan still lives. And when you see the news coverage on him, that'll tell you what was going on behind the scenes. Because his news coverage shouldn't be nothing but a mention, but it's going to be a dedication. Watch. So with that, I'm out.